Uh, hey everybody, this is a retro editorial, uh, first one of the year, uh, Retro Carriage Care Reviews. About to do, um, a quick synopsis of what is essentially a January dump movie. Uh, full disclosure, I'm pretty sure I can't actually do a full review of this because I am almost certain this is not going to be in theaters. And more to the point, it's kind of a really weird yet interesting conversation starter for the year as far as January dumps go. Uh, but let's get a little bit of background before I have to, uh, look up this movie. Uh, hope you like the lighting. Um, this is my, I hope, uh, night shoot kind of vibe. Uh, again, let me know in the comments if I did, got a little bit of a glow up on it. Uh, not at all trying to darken out most of my gear, uh, like usual. Not like I'm planning a real Nerf Red Hood video for, uh, I don't know, uh, Cobra Kai Season 4. So, uh, it's, again, uh, The King's Daughter. Uh, long dumb story short for anyone who's a pro wrestling fan like uh, me right here has been probably read it out that they're having a full-on trailer for this for the last couple of weeks on impact wrestling as of this thursday i am recording and watching uh the new impact uh the uh new uh, roster looks good i'm happy that mickey james is a uh, now again i guess legacy um knockouts champ so uh enough of my uh, sports talk or in this case uh pro wrestling this movie, it's a mess. Uh, it has like one, two, three, almost four writers. It was novelized by the Moon and the Sun series. And the INW won't give me the author. Oh boy, that's not good. Um, but yeah, this was supposed to be a January dump eight years in the making. I'm not kidding. Originally, this was supposed to come out, I believe, they shot it in like either 2013, 2014. It was supposed to come out in April, but they pulled it back because Fast 7 was coming out. Card 2, if I ever did a review when those movies were new. Fast Wise. Thus began the eight-year journey of this being on again, off again with a bunch of studios and Chinese production companies as sub subsidiaries that I really do not understand uh, how this took eight years to get here. This, keep in mind, this is not like a COVID era movie where it was filmed during quarantine and had to shoot when things subsided. No, 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 no. This had to go through two presidential terms. We're talking like uh, Obama to Trump to now uh, Biden. America-wise here in the States. Uh, let me know in the comments internationally if you have any newer, uh, if I have any newer uh, international fans that want to talk Palmer stuff. Also, give me pointers on the lighting. I think I got the blotchiness a little subsided. I'm not hiding my doubles acting. No. Anyway, um, that being said, cast-wise is pretty standard as far as a usual January dump movie. Wow, I am really trying to, you know what? Okay, that went a little uh, alone. Uh, scary, scary stories of the alone dark, or um, damn it, there was a Nick show that's gonna kick my ass. And anyway, of course, that uh, uh, old school show you guys want to know it was like in the nineties with uh, scary stories. Anyway, King Star has the cast of the following: Kaya Saracadello, uh, Claire from the recently just reviewed uh, Welcome to Raccoon City card there from my previous review there. William Hurt, William Hurting up for a check, if you could tell, and um, Pierce freaking I Wish I Was Still Bond Brosnan. Uh, again, jokes aside, uh, the development for this movie to be produced and to be released is pretty much more engaging and more exciting than the actual movie itself, because all it really is is just, I guess, a Pirates clone wannabe movie at the time. Which is kind of ironic for Kaya's case. She did do, I forgot which, oh yeah. She did 2017's Last Pirates uh, movie. Uh, I think it was, I forgot this. I think it was Pirates 5. I don't know that. Dead Man Tell No Tales. Basically the last time this franchise was marketable before uh, that whole situation with Johnny and Amber showed up. So again, I'm citing him nowadays in case anyone's asking a future reference. Uh, she also had enough time in that eight years to do, oh, I don't know, the entire Maze Runner franchise and a little indie horror known as Crawl that I actually wanted to see. Uh, it was executive produced by uh, Sam Raimi at the time, and I hope, um, since this is a light Marvel-ish update, I'm very much aware of the Evangelary uh, situation when it comes to her being openly anti-vax at that uh, uh, Washington rally that went basically nowhere, thank God. Uh, I want to believe her case, but a lot of MCU actors who do this kind of thing usually get a quiet... Yeah, no. So, uh, I'll, I'll talk more about that with some real or Marvel characters I could pull for it. Uh, keep in mind, we're gonna have to use MCU characters. If you're not a fan of that, I understand. Uh, but more on this movie's case, it was a mess. Um, uh, I don't know where to begin. Um, I highly recommend Darren Morrill, uh, for his, uh, charts pot, uh, charts show. Uh, he basically does a better rundown for this. 
Um, he did two videos, a brutally honest review roundup with this and a bunch of other movies he's watching, uh, I think Sundance or TIFF, that's probably happening right now, and his version, his full spoilers for Scream 5. So, for a 90 minute average movie that should have been out at least the mid 2010s took way too long. And the only reason why this got off the ground is through Anthem Entertainment. For those who are uh, Impact fans know that Anthem Entertainment is helping uh, Impact stay on TV basically these days along with uh, contributing factors like I don't know AEW and a bunch of other New Japan stars that want to help out kind of like they did back in the days during um, when they were still uh, TNA. So all that aside, what are my thoughts of the actual movie itself? Uh, not much. Uh, Sean McNamaran, if I got your name right, has been a director video director for as long as I can tell and a producer of Even Stevens. I just looked up his IMDb, which I will definitely be putting all of this down below. Um, so with that all being said, uh, my final thoughts on just how much of a weird ride this style of January dump movie had to travel just to get into theaters during a semi post pandemic era uh, theatrical release is uh, kind of interesting. Uh, rating wise, it's pretty much an average five per one over 10, so basically it's eh, pretty bad. But basically, from the cast to the crew to the gaffers to probably basically any crew that's left that actually wants to get a check off of this movie. Uh, I hope you get them. Uh, I know Pierce definitely moved on to stupider things like, um, that's uh, Cinderella, Nef uh, Amazon movie that uh, Razzle did a, f a full drunk stream on. Um, I got used to Razzle's content. I was going to try to figure out a way to like talk about it on, on the show proper uh, as far as my channel goes. But they're great commentary. Uh, they're drunk as hell. Um, it's a good way to relax if you're trying to like chill after like a whatever kind of week, entertainment-wise, news-wise, or just life-wise uh, as far as these last couple of years go. So, um, with that all being said, uh, do I recommend this movie? If I had to do an actual professional review of this, God, no. If I had to explain why I don't do January dump movies, uh, this is why. <laughs> but The Kingstarter did have an interesting story production-wise, and honestly, I'm kind of with Dan when he talked about this, uh, of both those videos, that there really should be, like, a tell-all novel of how much this got made. There should be, like, a story within a story about this whole thing. Um, does it expose a lot of the business? Uh, not really. It's just scheduling errors and to the point where even Chinese uh, studio uh, companies just like opened and folded at the same time as this thing was trying to be released. Um, I don't think this is basically the Half-Life 3 scenario of uh, bad movies, but it has the legs for that kind of uh, longevity as far as talking about it goes. Anyway, this is just me trying to express how I feel about the whole situation. Um, channels, I think you should be watching if they do cover this as a proper January number review. Um, obviously Amanda the Jedi or anybody from, um, uh, Space Ninjas, uh, Fruits, uh, not Fruits Ninjas, yeah, uh, damn, I forgot his name. Uh, they have a new podcast called Mothership, uh, 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 card there to, like, their channel trailer and stuff like that. Um, this would definitely make a good talking piece, uh, for their podcast. I I'll probably submit this video and, I don't know, email the whole situation, um, if I could get their, if I could contact them in general. Um, would love to be a part of the podcast just to talk about how weird of a journey this movie had to get into theaters. Because I feel like the journey getting to it in theaters is a lot more interesting than the plot itself, direction, and everything. Uh, I really have no fault for the cast and crew. Again, it's a January dump movie. You do what you gotta do to get a check, and it's kind of feeling like that. Um, I know former, um, Channel Awesome, uh, I think still working Channel Awesome employee, um, Brad Jones had a fun time ripping it to shreds, so I'll leave his link down below. And you know it's that bad of a January dump movie when I'm recommending former CA workers, so, yeah. Uh, anyway, end cards coming up to hopefully a not blotch your side here, uh, to my, re just released a shorts playlist on my updates on the Totally Norm Arc situation and Mando, uh, showing up to, uh, Book of Boba Fett in episode 5. Other hand here to my previous review, which was my Scream 5 review, and, uh, not at all getting ready to be Jason, uh, gear here to sub the channel. Notification down below for in case you guys want me to talk more retro, retro editorials or January dumps like this as a yearly thing. Again, let me know in the comments down below, uh, like-dislike ratio, whatever you want to do, uh, I guess metrics-wise. So with that being said, I am Richard Care, Richard Care Reviews, hoping that God you learned something out of this weird yet very interesting January dump movie. And, um, I guess that's a weird, if I had time to quote this thing, book, uh, you, you're ripping a heart out of a mermaid that has zero lines at all, acting-wise. Okay, what is this movie? Seriously. And, uh, I hope the book gets more exposure in other directions, uh, down the road. Uh, seriously, this is just weird. Honestly, it's just a January movie.